to now, we've been talking about how the standing wave is caused by a wave hitting an interface and then which then bounces back. The other way and they add up and they give you a standing wave. Now what's more interesting though is the case where you have not just the one interface but the two interface. Then what happens? Well then at this side you have a similar thing happening which also flips vertically and horizontally and you end up with another wave that travels back towards the right and they still add up and then this guy travels back towards the other way and so on and so forth and all these waves add up but something strange happens so let's get rid of that what if I move the interface a little bit move that a little closer to say there well then the reflected wave would be a little different. It would look like let me draw the interface here. So if we take this thing and we flip it vertical and flip it horizontal, we'll end up with something that looks like this. And now you can see how these are out of step because my other interface is not the right spot and as a result the next thing is going to be out of step and then this other thing is going to be out of step and eventually what you see is you get all these two kind of just whoops it's a bit messy but basically what happens is as the waves bounce back and forth, they all kind of wash each other out. And you don't end up with anything really. So that's why you need a certain specific length for your um, standing wave to form very visibly once you have the two interface. And we can look at that through what we call boundary condition. Okay, in terms of boundary condition, usually we only consider the two extreme cases. So we have your fixed end, which sometimes we call closed. Closed? Yeah. Um, that says it. it's basically your rope pinned onto the wall. It can't move. So if this x equal L, then y of l must be zero at all times. So it forces it to be a node. Then the other extreme is the free end. Where we call that open. And that's the one where you have like a ring that kind of moves up and down with the wave. And there, you don't so the y is no longer constrained to be in the uh, to be zero, but y prime is constrained to be zero because um, you can't have a kink, I guess, at this ring here, or else it'll accelerate infinitely fast downward because on the other side there's no balancing force. Or you can look at it as this is also always like a maximum displacement so that's where the anti node happens and at the max and min you know that the derivative is equal to zero so those are your common boundary conditions and it is through imposing these boundary conditions that we can figure out what frequency we can shake the rope at in order for the successive reflections to all add up for us to see the actual standing wave so the setup usually is this. So this case is our closed closed um, example where we have x equals 0 here, x equals L. So y of 0 has to be 0 and also y of L has to be equal to 0 because both of these two sides are fixed.
your wave equation, sorry, your standing wave equation now, and cosine k omega. We'll add a phase shift in there to accommodate our boundary condition and also has a cosine omega t. Now, both of these points have to be zero no matter what time it is. So in general, what we need to impose is um, when x is equal to zero, that cosine of k omega plus phi, oops, kx, excuse me, is equal to zero. So this is cosine phi is equal to zero simplest solution phi should be pi over 2 which makes sense because um, you would expect it to be kind of like a sine wave for you to hit 0 at that point so that's why I have the pi over 2 phase shift so with that we're going to rewrite our thing as to a sine kx cosine omega t and then we impose the other wave the other boundary condition so has to be 0 has to be sine of k times l so in general for us to satisfy that sine of kl is 0 we have a general solution, infinite number of solutions of that. And of course has to be integer, it could be plus or minus, that's perfectly fine. Then we can make this a little more intuitive by looking at 2 pi over k is lambda, so pi over k is just lambda over 2. So the length of the rope has to be some integer multiple of your 2 pi, sorry, lambda over 2, which appeals quite intuitively because in order for you to fit a wave, a standing wave in here, the 2n has to be fixed at 0. The first and easiest one you can draw is this, which is half the wavelength, and then the next one you can draw is that one and then that one so you can see how we're adding half a wavelength every single time so these words we call so this n here we call mode being n equals n equals 1 n equals 2 so on and so forth and because the length is fixed we can rearrange this we have L equal N lambda over 2. So then lambda, we have certain specific choice for lambda. That's 2L over N. And these are specific lambdas that can provide us with sustainable standing wave. And because we have certain choice of lambda, F equals V over lambda, so Vn over 2L, we have certain frequencies that work as well. So having chosen specific frequency that works and not others, that's why we call this resonance. That's what we mean by matching up the frequency. We're matching up the frequency so that we have the right wavelength in order to fit the um, boundary conditions that we have. So this is very quickly with this is the for the closed closed system the um, boundary condition forces us to choose frequency of this form and we'll go over in the next lecture how we come up with how we come up with these fairly quickly with uh, the different boundary conditions as well as what we can do with it and what it actually means.